Today's topic is 10.2, products and quotients of functions, found on pages 488 to 498 in your text. Your curriculum outcome is to demonstrate an understanding of operations on and compositions of functions. And our lesson objectives today, our first one is to find the result when two functions are multiplied or divided. Our second one is to be able to sketch the result of the product or quotient of two other functions. And our third one is to be able to determine the domain and range of a function that is the result of the product or quotient of two other functions. So the notation for finding the product or quotient of two functions, which we're going to call f of x and g of x, is as follows. And that'll be our h of x function, which is a product, is equal to f of x times g of x. Or you could say just f times g of x. So it's a lot similar to the adding and subtracting of functions we did the other day. And if we're dividing, we can just write it as f of x divided by g of x or f divided by g of x. Like with adding and subtracting two functions, you can find the product or quotient of the two functions both algebraically and graphically. The domain of the product of the two functions is once again the domain that is just common between the two functions. But the domain of the quotient of the two functions is the domain that is common between the, function, the two functions, sorry, but also has to take into account the restrictions on the denominator of the new function. So example, given f of x and g of x, determine h of x, which equals f times g of x. State the domain and range of h of x. So f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 4x minus 5. So if we're going to find f times g of x, it's just going to be as simple as saying h of x equals x squared times root 4x minus 5. Now, what we discovered last day with adding subtracting functions is that the domain is going to be whatever is common between these two functions. So we need to take a look at both these functions and find their domains. So for the first one, the domain is everything because it's just a plain old quadratic function, and we can plug any number in for x and we'll get an answer. However, with the g of x function, that's not quite the same. The domain in this case, there's a restriction. And that restriction is that we cannot have a negative num number underneath the root sign, but we could have a zero. So we could make this 4x minus 5 equals zero. And solving for x, we get um, 5 over 4. And that means that if we plug in anything greater than 5 over 4, we will get a number that we can have underneath the root sign. So that means our domain is x is greater than or equal to 5 over 4. So now we need to take both these two functions' domains into account when we look at the, um, the domain of the new function, h of x. So h of x will have a common domain, and the only thing that's common between these two is everything that's greater than 4. So the domain for h of x is x is greater than or equal to 5 over 4, and x can be any real number that is greater than or equal to 5 over 4. The easiest way to look at the range of this new function is just to graph it. And so I just pulled up the graphing calculator here. And first I'm going to graph x squared, which is the red function here, plain old parabola. And I'm going to graph 4x minus 5, the square root of 4x minus 5. And this is a regular root function. And then if I were to multiply the two of them together, which is the yellow function, um, you can see that the range will be everything that's greater than 0. So let me get rid of the blue and the red for a second. So here's our yellow function. It looks like it's everything greater than zero. Now notice also that the domain is what exactly what we said. It has to be greater than five over four. And that's the point right here, which is one and, uh, one and a quarter. And so the domain of the blue function was, had to be, um, was x had to be greater than five over four. So the domain of the yellow function or the combined function is also the same. And once again, our range looks like it'll be everything greater than zero. So our second example says, let f of x equals x plus 2 and g of x equals x squared plus 9x plus 14. It says, determine the equation of the function of h of x equals f divided by g of x. And then we're going to sketch the graphs of f of x, g of x, and h of x all on the same set of axes. And then we're going to state the domain and range of h of x. So first off, h of x is equal to our f of x function, which is x plus 2, divided by x squared plus 9x plus 14. Now you have to remember that your best bet is always to factor the bottom to see if anything cancels out. We learned that last unit. So we get x plus 7 in the bottom and x plus 2. So we actually do have two factors that cancel out. That would be the x plus 2s. And we're left with 1 over x plus 7. Then. And that does affect our final graph. Now, in order to sketch the, the graphs of these things on the same set of axes, I'm just going to use the graphing calculator. And so we'll go there next. All right, so here we are with the graphing calculator. We're going to graph uh, x plus 2 
which we know is just a line that has a y-intercept of two and a slope of one. That's our red function here. We're gonna graph x squared plus nine x plus 14. And hopefully you know that as a quadratic that has two x-intercepts, which we just found. There were our two factors, so negative two and negative seven are our two x-intercepts. And halfway in between is the point negative 4.5 and that is, uh, has a y, corresponding y value of negative 6.25. So to get, if you needed to get these points to graph, you could always um, just go point by point, like plug in a negative eight into our function, plug in a negative seven, negative six, et cetera, et cetera, and get your corresponding y values. Now, when we divide them, we found out that our new function was uh, x plus two uh, over x plus seven and x plus two, and those two things canceled out, the x plus twos canceled out. So we ended up with a x plus two over x plus, or sorry, a one over x plus seven. So from last unit, when we learned how to graph rational functions, you should know that to be a, um, a rational function that has a horizontal asymptote, or sorry, a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. So I'm gonna graph those two right here. So here it is, our vertical asymptotes at our x-intercept for our denominator, which was x squared plus nine x plus four, and that was at negative seven. And there was another factor that canceled off. And last unit, we learned that to be a hole in the graph. So if we use this Desmos graphing calculator, if we click on negative two, it actually tells us that there is no corresponding y value for negative two. It says that it's defined, undefined, which is perfect. So if we click along the graph, you can see that it goes from negative 3.49 over and over and over. And there's always a y value until that one spot where it's undefined, and then it continues to have a y value. So that just shows that this graphing calculator, graphing calculator, although it doesn't put a hole in the graph, if you click on it, it does tell you that there is a hole there. Now the domain and the range then, our domain is gonna be everything um, from the two functions, and that's our result here. So our domain here can be everything, we can say x, e, r, but there's two spots that it couldn't exist. One was at this x cannot equal negative seven, and the other one was that x cannot equal negative two because that was the location of a hole. And our range then, in this case, looks like it can be everything except a few key points. One is the horizontal asymptote, and that's at y e r, or sorry, y equals zero. And the other one would be the y value for this point, negative two. Now, if we needed to plug that into our function, our function being one over x plus seven, if we plug into a, a negative two in there, we get one over five, and that is 0.2. So we can say y cannot equal zero and y cannot equal one fifth. So in summary, uh, finding the product or quotient of two functions is as simple as multiplying or dividing the two functions. And finding the domain is the same when we were adding or subtracting functions, it is the domain that is common with the two functions. However, if you're dividing, you must also consider points of discontinuity, which we call holes, and non-permissible values, which we call vertical asymptotes. So remember that if you divide and you have fa uh, factors that are canceling out, those are the location of holes, and any factors on the bottom are vertical asymptotes. And finally, finding the range of the product or quotient of two functions is easiest when you graph the function. So you can either use a table of values for each of the functions and then just multiply those y values together or divide those y values together, or you can use graphing software. So your assignments on pages uh, 496 to 498. Good luck and we'll see you in class.